world GDP over the last two millennia? Please show me on this chart exactly where betting against innovation was a good idea. The answer is never. US electric vehicle sales in the first half of 2023. Tesla, approximately 330,000 in red versus everyone else combined, not even 200,000. In this video, new data shows Tesla is outselling the so-called competition by 10 to one, literally. And an anti-Tesla ETF is shutting down after sustaining catastrophic financial losses and inflicting third degree burns on a bunch of adult virgins. Am I allowed to say that? Well, I just did. You should hear some of the shit I say on my exclusive Patreon and ex-subscriber only videos. Check the links in the pinned comment if you can handle it. So a great piece of merch once said, don't bet against Elon. And by the way, link in pinned comment if you guys would like to pick up your own don't bet against Elon merch. Not only is this great advice, but these are also excellent conversation starters, especially if you encounter somebody with blue hair. Unfortunately, the folks who made this anti-Tesla ETF ignored this advice. We're over on Barron's. Anti-Tesla ETF set to close after hefty losses. Imagine that. What a surprise. A vocal critic of stocks such as Tesla and of celebrity bulls such as Kathy Wood would close the exchange traded fund he launched to put his skepticism into practice. George Noble announced Wednesday that his Noble Absolute Return, ticker NOPE, will stop trading. <laughs> this is ironic on August 24th and liquidate its $19 million in assets after cumulative losses of nearly 60% since the ETF's launch last September. Well done, George. How'd betting against Elon go for you? The ETF's trustees at the Tidal Financial Group said in a statement Wednesday that closing the fund, quote, would be in the best interest of the fund and its shareholders. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, you know what would have been in the best interest of the fund and the shareholders? Not betting against Tesla. Now, I do just want to dive into one little point here. Launched last September. What was happening last September? Last September. Last September, believe it or not, Tesla stock was around the $280, $300 range. That's when this ETF launched. Following that, Tesla stock collapsed close to 60%. Would have been a great time to say, well, okay, never thought it'd get close to $100 per share. Time to wrap this one up. We've absolutely cleaned up. However, that's not what happened. Tesla stock today is under 250 bucks. It was around 300 when this ETF launched, yet still they have cumulative losses of 60%. How the f did this happen? Now, just to be fair on the NOPE ETF, Tesla wasn't their only position. However, it was a big reason many people bought this ETF. Elon sucks, Tesla sucks, everything sucks, Kathy Wood sucks, everything in that orbit sucks, let's bet against it all. In other words, let's bet against innovation because that always works out, doesn't it? Apparently not. Now, the hilarious thing is, Despite the fact that this ETF launched with Tesla stock around $300 per share, Tesla stock today is around 240. They've still managed to accumulate losses of 60% in less than a year. How did that even happen? Maybe there was a little bit of confirmation bias. After all, the fund launches, Tesla's around 300. Next minute, Tesla's close to 100. Never made sense at the time. I said it a million times. Doesn't make sense. Won't end well. There was a war in Ukraine. Elon buys Twitter. There's a whole bunch of stuff pushing the stock down. In addition, and speculation alert, also believe a lot of large funds wanted a clean slate for the year of 2023. So a bunch of funds who'd made some money on Tesla stock dumped it toward the end of the year. I mean, the numbers line up pretty perfectly here. The bottom for Tesla stock was pretty much at the end of 2022. Then suddenly Tesla stock surges up over 120%. Many other stocks followed a similar trend. You just have to ask the question, why the f*** would anyone bet against innovation? Worse still, why would anyone think it's a good idea to bet against an Elon-led company? You have to have rocks in your head. Now, this is pure speculation, but I think that a lot of the people, maybe the majority of people who bought into this fund, they don't like anything about their life. This clouds their judgment. They become very emotional and they see somebody like Elon Musk. And instead of feeling happy for the guy, because he's absolutely slaying it, they see him as a bar to measure their own life against and realize that they're an absolute fucking loser. Instead of doing some self-help and reading some books and trying to get out there and take some risks and improve and learn and grow... Instead, they think they'll feel better if they just try to bring down Elon. And obviously, with clouded judgment, Tesla's a fraud, Elon's a fraud, Elon's a fake engineer, he doesn't even know what he's doing. He just got lucky many times in a row. Fuck this guy, I'm going to bet against his company. That can't possibly go wrong. As we see here, they obviously should have listened to my merch design. Don't bet against Elon. Never ends well. Don't bet against innovation. It's just a dumb fucking idea. Cumulative losses of nearly 60%. Yet Tesla stock is down from when the ETF launched. Hilarious. Neither Noble nor Tidal Financial responded by queries from Barron's. Of course not. Noble made a name for himself, running Fidelity Investments mutual funds in the 1980s, then two international hedge funds with performance that earned him a spot on the Barron's roundtable. <laughs> in recent years, Noble managed his own money. He also became active on social media where he found an audience. <laughs> 
that shared his scepticism of a stock market that he saw as bubbly, espousing a traditional preference for reasonably pri- we go, reasonably priced value and growth stocks. Noble heaped scorn on grandly valued names such as Tesla and its fans like the ARK Invest's CEO, Kathy Wood. Noble's new following on social media allowed him to launch his ETF in late September 2022 to the Tesla Q echo chamber again. <laughs> When you have a captive audience who just hate themselves and therefore they hate Elon Musk more because he just makes their life look absolutely abysmal, it's like leading sheep to the slaughter. You know, here's a business idea, unless somebody's already taken it. I don't know if they have, but here's a business idea if anyone's game. I couldn't do it. It doesn't feel right to me. But given the captive audience who hate their lives and by proxy hate Elon Musk because he makes them look like losers, rightly so, it could be quite a lucrative career to set up a sham research shop publishing never-ending bearish research, inverted commas, around Tesla, claiming the competition's coming, market shares collapsing in Timbuktu, their busted growth story. You might even throw out some lines like, they're just a car company. Because I can guarantee you would have an audience, a bunch of sheep buying every piece of research you publish, everything, no matter what the reality, in their little world, they need Tesla to fail, to feel better about themselves. They need it to be a fraud. They need Elon Musk to be a loser, a fake engineer with no abilities whatsoever. In fact, I think that such a sham research shop could probably sustain itself doing six figures of business year after year for a decade or more before anyone caught on. So if anyone wants to do that, unless it's already been done, hey, I mean, it's an idea. Title marketed the Noble Advised ETF as an active fund that gave individual investors access to a long short strategy for fees of less than 2%. In contrast to the 20% fee charged by hedge funds, it was an ETF that said nope to passive investing, nope to ignoring valuations and nope to asset bubbles. Oh my God. Rule number one with investing. Unless your brain is so gigantic, it's just simply unfathomable to us common folk. Buy and hold is a great strategy, as long as what you're buying and holding is a great company. This ETF proudly said no to passive investing. In other words, it said yes to gambling in the stocks casino, trading in and out of positions. Never wise, unless, like I said, you've got a gigantic, truly gigantic brain. Also said nope to ignoring valuations. And what this really means, it's a proxy for, if I don't understand why this company has a certain valuation, if it doesn't fit into the box that I've decided it needs to fit into, it's overvalued and therefore I'm happy to short the stock. I think just about every investor who's ever missed the opportunity in Tesla or worse, been dumb enough to short the stock, has made the same mistake, trying to fit Tesla into a box that it doesn't belong in, ignoring everything other than what belongs in the box and deciding, well, doesn't fit in the box, all the stuff that... I'm ignoring, well, I can just ignore that safely because it's irrelevant, therefore, I'm going to short Tesla stock. And nope to asset bubbles. Ah, yes, the old Tesla stock is a bubble. The stock market's in a bubble. This growth is unsustainable. I posted this on X. World GDP over the last two millennia. With the commentary, I wonder what this looks like when useful humanoid robots massively expand the global labor market. Please show me on this chart exactly where betting against innovation was a good idea. The answer is never. Folks who, I'll just be honest here, suffer from small brain syndrome. Might look at something like this and think, oh, well, world GDP is in a bubble. That's going to burst. Look, it's a bubble. Look, it's going straight up. That's a bubble. How do I short world GDP? How do I bet against humanity? How do I bet against technological innovation, productivity gains? Of course, these people would be wrong. This is what standing on the shoulders of giants looks like consistently over about 2000 years. This is, by the way, a linear chart. Here's a log version. (laughs) It looks nearly identical. Now, if you don't understand the terminology, the difference between linear and log, whatever. If you do, you'll understand. It looks like this on a log chart. Ridiculous. One of this guy's subscribers replied, the future is going to be wild. I wonder why he would say that. Maybe it's got something to do with those humanoid robots. I don't know. Back to this very, very wise investor who thought it was a good idea to bet against Elon and Tesla. He quickly put the money to work, going long oil and gas stocks while shorting Tesla, Coinbase, DraftKings, Roku and Woods Arc Innovation ETF. It has come to a quick end with the S&P 500 up more than 20% this year through July. The Noble ETF was down 69%. Nice. Not even a year old, the Nope Fund will end its run. What can I say? Is it ever wise to bet against innovation? This chart is called the competition is coming (laughs) all over themselves. New electric vehicle registrations for the first half, January through June in 2023 in the United States. Tesla number one with 329,608 electric vehicles registered in the United States in the first half of 2023, representing 60.3% of the electric vehicle market, which as we know is the entire new vehicle market soon, so no point paying attention to dwindling ICE sales. Number two, Chevrolet, 34,140. Market share, 6.2%. In other words, number two, quite literally, 
approximately one order of magnitude less market share than Tesla in the United States. I mean, this is, it's just embarrassing. Number three, Ford, not even 28,000, 5.1% market share. Number four, Hyundai, just over 20,000, 3.8% market share. BMW, under 20,000, 3.3% market share. Mercedes-Benz, under 18,000, 3.3%. Volkswagen, under 17,000, 3%. Rivian, under 16,000, 2.8%. Kia, under 14,000, 2.5%. Audi, just over 10,000, 1.8%. Nissan, less than 10,000, 1.6%. Volvo, less than 8,000, 1.4%. And Polestar, under 5,000, less than 1% market share. I struggle to think of any situation, any product, anywhere in which we saw such dominant market share. I mean, talk about second place needing a telescope to see Tesla. Tesla is outselling number two by 10 times in the United States. Now, if you're not so much of a number nerd, this is what it looks like visually. US electric vehicle sales in the first half of 2023. Tesla, approximately 330,000 in red versus everyone else combined, not even 200,000. Keep in mind, it's predominantly based on Model Y and Model 3 sales, not cheap vehicles. I wonder what happens when Tesla's next generation vehicle is launched at about 50% less than today's Model 3 and Model Y. Any guesses? Same data, this time as a pie chart. Pac-Man strikes again. So a few key takeaways from today's video. Number one, it is never wise to bet against innovation. Number two, something needs to be severely wrong with you emotionally and or intellectually to think it's a good idea to bet against anything Elon Musk has anything to do with. A multi-decade track record has made this quite clear. Number three, if you hate yourself, if you're severely depressed, if you have an inferiority complex, if you actually are rejected by society, you have no friends, you live in your mum's basement, you have no accomplishments, no achievements. Your life sucks and you know it. Buying an anti-Tesla ETF, shorting Tesla stock, buying Tesla puts won't change your situation, won't improve your self-esteem and won't make people want to be around you. The good news is there's a solution. You can actually start making some positive changes and improve your circumstances if only you're willing to make the effort. Or alternatively, just keep shorting Tesla stock, vaporizing all your capital and continue in the same vicious downward spiral choice is yours. And if anyone watching happens to have a friend, colleague, family member, neighbor who's currently short Tesla stock or has a passionate hate for Elon Musk, just know that they are definitely in pain. And I'm not trying to be funny here. This kind of self-destructive behavior is a very clear cry for help. Athletic Greens AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. Athletic Greens AG1 is an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point and something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, 
My biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1 shit, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud, but... Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. And remember, there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose here. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. You get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links in the pinned comment. See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.